here's what you need to do for yourself. You need to create a sleep sanctuary. There's a reason you need to sleep in the dark. Blue light is not always blue. Blue light comes off of any electronic device. Everything in your bedroom should be turned off at night, unplugged or turned off. There should be no lights of any kind in your bedroom. You need to sleep in the dark. If you're worried uh, about finding your way to the bathroom in the middle of the night because you're a certain age as I am, what I do is I put something on the floor so I can feel it with my feet, my bare feet, so that I know where I'm going and I don't go you know, the wrong place. But I do not have any light on because you naturally produce melatonin when you're in the dark. Melatonin is a natural antioxidant, a hormone we produce, that repairs the damage that occurs to our DNA as a result of being alive. Every day we have damage. So you want to take all screens, all electronics, all wireless devices out of your bedroom, including, of course, you should not have cordless phones, which are also two-way microwave radios like small base stations. Do not sleep with your phone on. And I really recommend that you get uh, blue light blocking glasses if you spend a lot of time on a computer. And you can get screen coverage, screen uh, films that go over your screens that will also reduce the amount of blue light coming from it. Make sure there's no utility meter on uh, in, near your bedroom wall. And if there is, learn how to block it if you can't get it removed. Now, in order to reduce wireless radiation for your families, make sure to use a corded landline. Corded landline. This is also a matter of safety and security, because when the hurricanes hit and the storms hit, you have a, a better chance of still having some service from an old-fashioned corded landline. Use text instead of voice calls. Minimize your overall use. Download anything you want to give to a child, if you must give a child a device, and give it to them on airplane mode. Use Ethernet connections. This information is provided in the safety cards we have here for you to take away. And we're happy to make them available. I'm sure Living Web Farms will feature this on their website as well. Congress is not all rolling over on this issue. And it's important to support and recognize these members of Congress that are doing the right thing. Senator Richard, Richard Blumenthal has called for a full investigation of the safety and health impacts of 5G. He has said we are flying blind when it comes to 5G right now. Anna Eshoo, Peter DeFazio, Tom Swazi, uh, and others have taken the position that it's time for us to get more information about 5G and they've written to the FCC demanding this, and you should encourage that and ask your congressional representatives to get involved. Ask them to join in this activity, demanding safety information, demanding the right to wired access. If they want 5G, they should make it available wired, not wireless. I'm part of 250 scientists who've written to the United Nations calling for a moratorium on 5G because we believe enough peer-reviewed research has been produced to indicate this is a problem. In order for you to be effective, you need to get informed as you are this evening. You need to write to Congress. You need to speak at public meetings, work with people here who will be happy to tell you what you can do, organize a coalition in your own community. These are some of the cities that have taken steps. Burlington, Massachusetts requires annual recertification for every antenna. There's no testing, there's no monitoring, there's no certification, but they can require it because a city has the right to protect public health. They can require this. Petaluma is requiring 1,500 feet distance between the antenna and residences. So effectively, there is no residential 5G, unless it can be wired. 
and Fairfax is also instituting these requirements. Now what you can do, the Berkeley, California Town Council passed the cell phone right to know ordinance and it withstood challenges from one of the most talented, expensive legal teams ever put together because Professor Larry Lessig of Harvard Law defended this statute. And it simply says, if you carry a phone in your pants or shirt pocket or tucked into a bra when the phone is on and connected to a wireless network, you may exceed the federal guidelines for exposure to RF radiation. This potential risk is greater for children. That's all. And that notice is required any, t any place a phone is sold. And that law has been upheld. And you may want to consider that here in Asheville. What's happening on 5G? Uh, this is Bern, Switzerland, where there are over 1,000 people protested. Remember, Switzerland is the home of the World Health Organization. This is an informed citizenry. They don't look like a ragtag bunch, do they? These are just some of the things that have happened in Italy. Municipal resolutions to halt 5G in several of the Rome areas and multiple resolutions filed. This is in the Italian Republic. And these are some of the international policies that have been taken. And you can find more on our website at ehtrust.org. We have lots of information constantly being updated about what's happening in Israel, in Chile, in India. There's the Baby Safe Project, which is specifically targeting pregnant women so they will know what exposures to avoid. And it, one of the leaders of that is Professor Hugh Taylor, who is Director of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Yale Medical Center. There's a collaborative for high-performance schools which promotes low EMF classrooms. And there's criteria for how to do this, which I would urge you to share with the Asheville Public Schools. You want to protect the ones you love. Children need more lap time, not app time. Children need to be held and talked to and looked in the eye and cuddled and made to understand that they are the most important persons in the world when they are little and small and that you're going to take care of them. And it's not taking care of your child if you use a cell phone as a pacifier. These are some of the cards we have available. Uh, Save the Girls is a reminder not to ever keep a phone in your bra. And we have information about how to protect yourself, protect your fertility. Now, I began with the statement that we needed to study the past because we wanted to make the future better. But I want to share with you this little cartoon. You see here the Tobacco Institute, which for years actually succeeded in saying, we don't have proof of harm. How many of you remember seeing that movie, Thank You for Smoking? Remember the, seeing that movie? Do you remember the last scene in that movie? I'll remind you. The last scene of that movie is a group of guys are sitting around a table and they look a little uncomfortable and they're being recruited to the business of advertising and their mentors are people from the tobacco, alcohol, and gun industries. Not exactly an easy sell, right? So they come to the tobacco, alcohol, and gun industries for help. And so the question off camera is, well, is it true? Do cell phones cause cancer? And they all start to talk at the same time. Well, we don't know, we're not sure. And the guy says, wait, stop. I want you to practice saying these words in the mirror. While we're concerned about the evidence, at this time there's no direct proof that cell phones cause brain cancer. Mm -hmm. Practice saying that with a straight face. Mm -hmm. That is, in fact, what the industry has done. Where's the proof? What is the proof? Show me the bodies. Uh, that time is over. And that's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here on a beautiful Saturday night talking about this issue. Because you know that the future of your children and your grandchildren is at stake. 
and the future of our environment is at stake. You want to maintain this beautiful, wonderful place you have here in Asheville. You want your trees and your bees and your birds not to be disturbed and damaged. Then you need to get involved. You need to get educated and motivated so that we don't go down this rabbit hole where we, 20 years from now, say, oh my God, what have we done? What have we done? I don't want to see that happen. And I'll end with a story from the Talmud. There's a group of workers, and they're told they have a very important job to do. And it's complicated. And they say, oh, forget it. We can't do this. We don't have the right tools. It's impossible. It's too complicated. We can't do it. And the answer is, it's not up to you to finish the job. But you must begin it. You must begin it. So hopefully, we will all begin it here this evening. And I thank you very much for your time and attention. <laughs>